Hi, Chris Murray here. Video in this tutorial on Minecraft Sword that we're going to move over to a 3D printer and print. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the modeling cleanup. We're going to prepare the model to extrude some of these faces uh, and get it ready to receive materials that we're going to do later. Although we don't need materials for 3D printing, I decided we should probably go ahead and do it because it's a nice example of creating multi subobject materials. Be sure to follow the links at the end of this video for links to the other videos in this tutorial series. So I've got my outline here, and you may recall at the end of the previous video, we had uh, created the outline, cleaned up all of the splines, and uh, placed the vertices properly, and now we're just adding an extrude modifier. And as I mentioned previously, at this point, we could actually print this model because it is indeed a watertight model, but we want to add a lot more detail to it. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we add a significant amount of detail and make it look, have that pixelated look. So I've got the extrude modifier on here, and you can see I'm adding some height segments. And we don't really need to do that at this point. Uh, we are going to add vertical segmentation later. For right now, I really want to focus on how the surface of the sword is divided up. So I'm creating a copy of our reference image just so I can get an idea of all of the different elements that we're going to want to accommodate in this model. And I'm also going to collapse the model to an editable poly. And the reason we're doing this is I no longer need access to the extrude modifier and uh, I want to work directly on the polygons in the scene. Now what we want to do is divide up the top surface to look like the reference texture that I've copied off to the right there. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use the cut tool. And what I can do with the cut tool is I can cut across the geometry and add segmentation. And what happens is not only does it add new lines, but it also cuts any intersecting lines that it goes across. So you can see there that I'm adding, I've added uh, three, four, five lines now at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and add some more of these. Now when I go into vertex subobject mode, you can see that vertices have been added inside, or I should say vertices have been added in the spans across the various edges, so I don't have to actually go add all that extra geometry. What's really important though is that I'm just going from vertex to vertex, and uh, I'm you can see that uh, I'm doing that going right across from vertex to vertex. This is why it was so important to line things up uh, in the previous video. Okay. Now, obviously, I don't have uh, things to line up for that other one, so that's fine. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Let's go ahead and drag that across there. And we'll just kind of uh, finish up this process, and then when, I, when we come back, I will explain how we're going to do some of the areas that don't have some extra vertices. Okay, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn off grid points, and I'm going to add midpoint to uh, our selection option here. And what this is going to allow me to do is select the midpoints of the edges that don't have vertices across them so that I can get accurate positioning uh, of the edges. So any place that I don't have a vertex on the other side, I'm going to use, I'm going to start at the midpoint and drag over to the vertex there. So there's that. And uh, let's, there's one right there. Again, using my cut tool because it'll automatically cut into the uh, spans of edges that I have already laid down. Now you can see that those are off a little bit. And that is uh, due to the imprecision in the image that we created. But we'll go ahead and fix those in a little bit. That's, those are going to be easy things to fix. This one poses a little bit of a different problem because uh, it's a larger, more uh, it's a larger square volume. So I can't use midpoint because it uh, I really need to go almost in um, thirds, which isn't going to allow me to do that. So in order to cut this properly, 
So to solve this problem, you can see that I'm going to use my grids to my advantage here. And even uh, though it's not lining up perfectly with the graphic, again, that's okay. You can see I'm going to move it around a little bit here to get it to line up correctly there. I'm more uh, concerned about the first line placement, and then I can adjust the second line after that. So I was just using any grid point to cut to find that position. So now I've added two new slices in there. And now I can take advantage of midpoint again because I want to do, it, do this in thirds. So I'll turn off grid points, turn midpoint back on. And now when I go here, I can get that. And then I can go midpoint there. And now I know that I've evenly divided that up. So now we have all of our top part, the top surface of our sword subdivided into these square pixel-like patterns, and we're ready to move on to the next part, which is cleaning up some of these cuts, because as we saw previously, some of them weren't exactly straight.